Yo, Bucko, it's Zero, come back to you with another figure review. And today we have one of my favorite characters from The Mandalorian, one of the most badass females we have ever gotten in Star Wars. It's the Star Wars Black Series credit collection, Cara Dune. And, whew, this is one of my favorite figures they've ever released to start off with and they give her a repaint and some of my favorite colors I really love the orange and teal they got going on here it's very unique it's gonna stand out a lot on the shelf and Cara Dune is just a badass now this is not the one that I got on the toy hunt with Nurk IRL this is actually a second one I had uh, found later on and I really wanted to open that first one but that one is gonna remain a trophy on my shelf as a reminder of how epic that day was. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. I'll link it. But, yeah. Cardoon is one of my favorite characters they added in The Mandalorian. And she's one of the two most badass females that they added. The other is Fennec Shan. And I'm really hoping we get a figure of her soon. But for now, we got two figures of Cardoon. And she is one of my favorite all time figures. And this repaint. It's going to be so much fun. Now, I know you, a lot of you guys might hate repaints, but I don't really care. I'll still buy them, especially since teal or sea green is one of my favorite colors, and this is one of my favorite figures, so it works for me. Now, there's a lot of cool stuff going on with this figure, so we're going to go ahead and check out this box real quick. So at the front of the box, you got your concept art from the end credits love that when I saw this I was like crap I really wish her armor was teal like every time I saw the concept art for a character I was like okay why weren't they that color they look so badass but I love designs for all the characters but I'm so thankful we are getting them now for the credit collection ones for the original designs because otherwise we wouldn't be getting them it's kind of like the Ralph McQuarrie art to me and then of course you got Cara Dune in the teal Got the Mandalorian up here, which is cut off. Your Kenner logo. You see the credit in the front. Flip it over to the back. There she is. And just like the other one, it says this distinctive credit collection features premium deco application inspired by the end credit images of the Mandalorian, plus a collectible Imperial credit accessory. After the fall of the Galactic Empire, usage of their former money, Imperial credits became less common, with many planets refusing payments in the currency on principle. Kind of boring, but here I have the box for the original Cardoon release, and a funny story about this is I actually had this thing delivered to my house without ever receiving a notification that it even got shipped out, but it had been sitting in front of my house for two days in a box while it was raining. And I was like, dude, this thing is going to be destroyed when I get out there. The box is perfect. No water damage at all. That cardboard was destroyed, though. I'm surprised it didn't leak into the box at all. But yeah, the box is pristine. Honestly, if I was an inbox collector, this would be a godsend. But I was not too worried about it because I'm an out-of-box collector. But still. Anyways, front of the box. really like her portrait. How you can see the little Rebel logo right there. Yeah, it says Cara Dune. She was originally 101. Back of the box says Cara Dune, a veteran of the Galactic Civil War who fought for the Rebellion. Cara Dune is a seasoned warrior who has put her days of military discipline behind her and now has reinvented herself as a mercenary. Well, kind of. Anyways, we're going to get her out of the packaging. Here she is out of the packaging. And holy crap, she's looking sexy as hell. Now, first off, I want to go ahead and take a look at the accessories, but I'm going to start with the credits. So she comes with this kind of like steel-colored credit. Wow, that looks so weird on the camera, but yeah. Sorry, I kind of have my camera messed up a little bit to show off her color a little better because for some reason, greens hate showing up on my camera, but yeah. That's the color it looks like, but when you turn it this way, it looks gold. But yeah, this is the color it actually is. Now compared to the credit from the actual uh, Death Trooper, it's the same exact mold and everything. So yeah, they're all the same exact mold. I'm not really sure what this says. It probably says, money from the Empire. In the Empire we trust or something. But yeah, same exact mold. Pretty cool. Um, 
This one is the steel silver. There is a silver one that comes with the heavy Mando. That's pretty cool. You could probably use this as like a cosplay item or something. Like, here you go. We're going to start with her BFG, her Cara Dune's heavy blaster. This is one of those times I absolutely cannot find the name of something. So, yeah, I'm just going to be referring to it as a heavy blaster. Pretty sure this was a Lewis gun, um, but this thing looks badass. But yeah, pretty sure this is based off the Lewis gun. Um, it's a double barrel rifle and this thing is badass when it's not jamming. By the way, how does a laser rifle jam? No idea. Anyways, that's the credit collection version. This is the original version. There's a huge difference here. Yeah, there's... Both of these are super detailed. Um, this one looks, like I said, this one looks fresh, like it hasn't been worn, it's brand new, just issued to her. This one looks worn, very weathered and stuff. So yeah, take your pick. These are both super nice. And then I'm pretty sure that the strap does go right here, because yeah, I'm not really sure where else it would go, but it plugs in perfectly here, and that's wor always worked for me. Now, you can also take that off but yeah I wish it was just like one piece I'm sure like people would break it but yeah usually having it like this straps around your shoulder just fine and if you really want to you could pop this out of the socket here but yeah you pop that out of the socket there if you don't want the strap on just put it right back in I was gonna say I hate pulling those small little, little pegs out of places like that because it they never end well but that went right back in super easy a yeah, pretty cool both of these I really love all of her accessories she comes with. Super nice. There's so much detail on this blaster that like every time I turn it I'm like oh something new. And that's pretty badass. Now here is her blaster pistol. This is the one that comes with the credit collection. This one's really plain compared to her original release one. Yeah the original release one definitely wins out here. Yeah this one has no paint whatsoever. This one has the silver and the grip, so yeah, this one isn't too impressive, but it's there. That one's going to go ahead and holster right, right here. There you go, super easy. And yeah, that peg's back into place. And yeah, that pistol's not going anywhere. Like I said, my favorite thing is when they can store their weapons, which leads me to my next point. Here's the knife. This one versus the original. Again, it's another case of looks like it was just issued. In fact, I almost want to argue that this this one's way nicer looking, but yeah. Um Yeah, this one has like a more steel, kind of dark steel. This one's silver, and then the paint for the yeah the paint for the handle goes all the way up yeah super nice now again this knife goes right in here that's gonna be that is gonna mess with the articulation a little bit but it is a place to store the knife if you don't move the boot too much I've always stored my knife here with little to no problems so yeah you could definitely do that and that's gonna be fine it's, anyways Bam. Here she is looking super sexy and oh my god I love this figure. I love this figure. Now honestly this looks like an early kind of rebellion look. Like maybe her early days as a shock trooper she had the teal armor. It's super nice. I also love how her hair from the concept art, her purple, it's more of a like pink here but her pink and teal go on the figure. It's a really nice concept that didn't stick around in the show. Again, another thing I was upset about when I saw the concept art, but the current design is still super cool. But yeah, like I said, maybe this is like her early days in the Rebellion. Very, very, I really like the color. Like this, this is why I buy the repaints is for figures like this is because, I mean, why would you pass this up? This is beautiful colors. I, I don't know, I always love the concept of like, here's a different colored thing than something you're already used to and it looks badass. 
I don't know. But yeah, even like just in general, you get a ton of detail on this figure. Unfortunately, there's none on the back of either of these figures, so maybe that's just how it is. So I can't really complain there for there not being much detail on the back of these figures. Or for this one, at least, because this, this one has almost no bumps or anything on the back. But yeah, the front is so much more detailed than this original figure. Um, yeah. Uh, the main differences I'm noticing though, besides her having all this like rust and orange dirt everywhere all over her, is that on her, this is non-existent, and yeah, all the silver, pretty much all the silver here on the belt is orange, and yeah, besides that, they, the, um, pretty much all the blue is replaced all the blue and teal is swapped around with the exception of the pants man that these these are two completely separate figures honestly You'd be mad about this repaint because it's so different to the point where yeah it could pass off as a different time era for her even the gauntlets go from this dark teal to like this lighter teal just like this goes from it's like the opposite on here where it goes from this light blue to the dark blue like there's so many little details here jeez this is probably the best out of the credit collection the best paint job oh my gosh <laughs> all right but yeah, going back to her, yeah, she has, it's the same exact figure, same exact details, few differences, but yeah, there's also a little bit, there's also a little bit of a blue, like a kind of blue paint throughout that kind of gives it more detail. Like, this thing is stupid detail for no reason, besides the back, which is a little plain, but yeah, this thing has a lot of detail. I really gotta give Hasbro prop, props for this one. Now, like I said... I don't think they expected too many people to be taking this out of the box and reviewing it, but it's here. But yeah, can't even be mad about the back of the figure. But yeah, the front of the figure, beautiful. She has her stripes going around her arm. She has her rebel tattoo, which this one you really can't tell. It's really hard to tell here, but that is the rebel logo. It's a definitely a bit easier on here to tell it is the rebel logo, but it's super small course it's not going to be perfect then again her paint love the hair colors I love the kind of pink and teal going on there beautiful just ah this figure is so nice and then her boots are a different color yeah this one's definitely going to stand out on the shelf a lot there's almost no teal characters I could think of in Star Wars that aren't like droids or something so yeah, this is going to be a beautiful addition to the shelf. And now we're going to get into the articulation. So her neck goes up into a ball joint at the head. And you're not going to get a ton of movement out of this, but it's still there. It's not the worst thing ever because, I mean, yeah, the collar kind of hinders it a tiny bit. But it's not the worst articulation I've ever seen, but it's not great. And then her shoulder pads are going to hinder the articulation a little bit. Like, they are kind of flexible but you're really not going to get it to move too far and, but you do have a hinge and swivel at the shoulder and no butterfly joint in there yeah, hinge and swivel at the shoulder this doesn't this goes out about that far about that far back about that far like i said you're not getting a ton of range you might be able to play at this and try to get it more but these shoulder pads do have a habit of popping off on some people so I wouldn't even mess with that minor pretty firmly in there so I just wouldn't even risk that at that point then you have a single jointed elbow and it's very the skin tone is very nicely like hidden so yeah, the hin the um, on the back it's hidden on the front it's gonna be hidden yeah it's I really like 
when they do their kind of um I really like when Hasbro manages to pull off the elbow joint correctly on flesh characters. Very nice. And then there's no swivel at the gauntlets. Usually these things get like swivels there. But yeah, then her wrist goes in and out and then on the other side it goes up and down for aiming purposes. I just noticed these kind of like knuckle, the knuckle paint, that's really cool. And then she has a ball joint at the torso, you get a really good range of movement there. Her belt, it will have a habit of moving, so this may end up moving, I think it's glued in here. My original one is also glued in there, yeah. So originally I thought it was supposed to be up higher, but it's supposed to be right there, don't mess with it. And then getting back to the articulation that goes all the way forward, not really back at all she goes out that much and then she has her thigh swivels thick thighs and then she has double jointed knee oh god yeah this knee does not want to do that double jointed knee on both sides and she can kick her own ass and then of course this knee pad hides the articulation on this side which is brilliant and on this side I'm going to take out this knife because I'm kind of worried about it Pretty much the same articulation on both sides, regardless of the knee pad. And then you have boot swivel, which again, um, so I'm going to show you yeah, down in there, uh, where you can kind of see where the knife plugs into. Now if you twist that around, it's going to kind of go into where the knife is, so it might break the knife, so I would be a little careful when you swivel that. Uh, you can, ah, uh, yeah, pretty much if you don't bring it forward, it should be fine for the most part kind of do like most of the natural movements yeah but on the other side you have no problem doing the entire swivel if you want and then you got a hinge at the ankle and a forward facing pin for rocker all right now it's time for my favorite part let's get to the 360 view of this badass Okay, now we're going to show her off next to some other figures. Here she is next to Mando and IG-11, the OG Season 1 crew. And here she is next to the Empire Strikes Back Vader and the Remnant Stormtrooper. And here she is next to Boba and Sabine, because I wanted to have her next to a female Mandalorian, but Bo-Katan is not out yet. 
And as always, here she is next to Luke Skywalker Squawker. And like I said, this is one of my absolute favorite figures already, and I absolutely love the colors on this one. Definitely don't pass her up if you find her in the wild, which you probably won't now, but she was peg slain a while back, so she might still be viable, but she's an amazing figure, one of my all-time favorites, and it's one of my all-time favorite paint jobs. Now, I know you guys hate the repaints, but this is one of the few repaints that it's definitely worth the price. Anyways, I'm hoping we get more figures from the Mandalorian really soon here announced. I'm also hoping we get maybe some more credit collection figures, but I would be okay if they didn't make any more because, I mean, yeah, one or two of the repaints are kind of crappy, but if you only pick up one figure from that collection, let it be this figure. It's my favorite out of all five, and she is definitely worth the price. And as always, you can bring them in warm, or you can bring them in cold. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.